Bună ziua și bine v-am găsit în studioul UVT TV. Alături de mine, prin Skype, până am pe Milto și Rolomiu, invitat special al festivalului de film Galactic Imaginarium, unicul festival de film science fiction din România. Hello, welcome to our TV studio, like, through Skype. Uh, you are the special guest you. of the first edition of the Galactic Imaginarium Film Festival. How does it feel? It's the unique festival in Romania. I'm uh, very uh, uh, honored to to be uh, to be asked to, to do this. Uh, I can uh, say that it's the very first time I have been a guest of honor for a, a film festival. So I'm really happy to be uh, part of the festival. I'm also really glad that we've managed to still be able to do it even during the pandemic in a different way. But um, Darius has done an amazing job so far. So I'm looking forward to it. Do you think this genre has a bigger success nowadays than it had before? I'm so sorry, can you just repeat that question? Sure. Do you think this genre has like a bigger success nowadays than it had before? Uh, do you mean a uh, convention? The science fiction and so yeah. on. Yeah. So uh, uh, definitely. I mean, I think it's been growing uh, ever since uh i mean if you, if you think about it conventions and our celebration of uh science fiction and fantasy has been for a long time very underground it was something that, that was uh uh people people would make forums about but now it's become very mainstream and so everywhere in the world people want to uh find ways of bringing fans together um Uh, studios like it, obviously, because it sells their product. Um, but we really like it because it's it's sometimes, you know, being an actor and doing these things, you think that uh, our lives are full of um, uh, being congratulated on what you do. But the reality is that it's hard to sometimes find out what the feedback is. It's easier, of course, because of the internet. Um, But there's a whole rabbit hole with social social media that uh, we will get onto on another another occasion. But I think the reality is that it's really really popular, and it's it feels like it's growing all the time. The pandemic has obviously made a difference to people meeting. Um, I I had to cancel lots of conventions, but we are finding new ways of doing conventions. So we will see how well this goes. How was the whole industry of science fiction affected by the pandemic? As you mentioned before, a lot of things changed. The the, the hardest thing, of course, is, is is that we're not making anything. So uh, what's really interesting is that throughout this period, and it probably will last for, I mean, when all of this is said and done, at least a year. So you imagine a year of not making anything. Um, I know some movies have gone back into production, like Jurassic World, uh, which is filming in London. Ooh, they are back. But I think the reality is that films that had to be finished are being finished. But uh, we will see a bit of a lag between what we want to see and what is actually available. So, so that will have an effect. Um, let's talk a little bit about your career. So you started acting on stage and then you uh, started acting on movies. How was this transition? Uh, so they're two very different mediums, but I, and it's hard to compare because they're so very, very different, but I really love theater. Theater is, it's kind of the reason why I'm an actor is, is the theater because of Uh, the process and rehearsals and uh, working in groups uh, and divide. I mean, I was very much into devising theatre, very much like uh, a lot of fantastic theatre that came from Romania, which when I was a student was a uh, huge, huge inspiration, uh, a huge inspiration. Uh, very uh, exciting new original work that we'd never seen uh, very often in Britain anyway. We're very text-based theatre, whereas um, I saw some things at college that, that, that really opened my eyes. And a lot of it came from Eastern Europe. And so um, I was very lucky to be exposed to that. Um, 
So that had a big influence on me as a theatre performer and actually as an actor. I was very physical. You'd find me doing uh, dance and uh, circus and uh, throwing myself off stages, doing dangerous things like that. Wasn't particularly a very uh, uh, mainstream actor, I would say. But uh, Game of Thrones, of course, changed a lot of things for me. It meant that I got to uh, be be uh, available or offered or thought about for, for things that I would never have done before. So that's when I got to do more TV and film. And uh, it's very technical. It's a very different experience filming. Sometimes it can feel a little soulless, but the skill of the actor is to try and find a way to be able to to be able to do the tech technique of film acting, but bring truth and sincerity and an authentic authenticity to what you do, despite the working conditions. It's also say. harder because you cannot feel the same energy coming from the audience. It's something that we uh, exp experienced more nowadays, considering the pandemic. Yeah, and also the, the, that thing when you watch a play, the play starts and for maybe an hour, an hour and a half, those people on stage will be telling you that story and they are completely in control of telling that story. Even the director has nothing to do anymore. But on film, the process of doing the scene where you have to do it many times uh, or do it in, in a way that maybe is not so straightforward because you're dealing with maybe um, a person that isn't there because it's a CGI. All of these things make it much more technical. And so you have to bring a lot more imagination to, to what you do. Uh, whereas when you do theatre, uh, it, it, uh, it can feel sometimes, maybe you think about it as a false medium because it's so artificial. But the experience as an actor of performing on stage is a much more intimate and uh, 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 it, it's about people uh, working together, living in the moment, being present and telling a story. And that, uh, and that feels very, very different to filmmaking. Yeah, it might be a little more artificial, as you said, but still, as long as the emotion gets to the audience, uh, for us, it's like really good. Uh, of all the characters you acted on, which was your favorite? Oh, that's a very good question. Uh, I think it would be remiss of me to, to say that I didn't enjoy greatly playing a character like Sirio Farrell in Game of Thrones, even though he his presence wasn't very large in the in the story. He had a big effect on Arya Stark and uh, I got to learn sword fighting and learn uh, a particular style of sword choreography, which was so exciting to me because it's very rare. As an actor, you kind of just, you bring your imagination, you bring your 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 heart to what you do uh, and you just have to learn the lines. Whereas um, I often love, even though I find it very difficult, I love the challenge of being given something to do, which is, uh, a little harder than you would expect, but uh, I really enjoyed that. And so that is a very, very, very huge uh, achievement in my life. And I feel very humbled that people love that show so much. Um, but in theatre, I was lucky enough, enough to do King Lear uh, maybe three years ago with, a, with an amazing uh, actor called Don Warrington. And I played his fool. He played King Lear. And uh, that was a really wonderful experience. And and uh, I always, always come back to doing Shakespeare because I I find it um, a very, very fulfilling and rewarding experience every time you get to tackle one of those stories. As you said before um, about the uh, sword techniques and so on, how does it feel knowing that your character had such a huge impact on Arya Stark? very proud like a proud dad <laughs> that's how i felt when i was watching the last season of game of thrones um uh yeah it's it's uh it it 
I mean, they always told me, they said, you know, you don't stick around very long, but but you have a big influence on this character. And so those scenes that we had in the first season, David and Dan, the creators and writers of uh, Game of Thrones, they were very, very keen to emphasize how important this relationship was and how much it was uh, an important uh, launching point for Arya. Talking about the last season, it's uh, been a controversial season. Many of us haven't been, or many people haven't been really um, excited on the ending of it. How uh, do you feel about how it ended? Would you see another ending for Game of Thrones? Did you say, will we see another ending for no, Game of Thrones? No, if you would have seen another ending for it. Oh, uh, I, I, um, <laughs> so there's many, I have lots of, things to say about uh, Game of Thrones TV show, as I do for many TV shows that I watch and that them have a very strong opinion about, about all of them. But I can't help that because I have um, aspirations to be a, a, a creator of stories. So, 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 so I can't help but criticize these things. Um, but we also have to realize that um, it's so easy, it's so easy to kind of, to create a uh, to create something that people have so um, so easy to criticize the show and the storytelling, and I'm not saying for one minute that the criticisms weren't valid, but the, because some of them were very very valid, but every it was going to be so hard to please people. I think that my f really my only fundamental I didn't mind how the story ended and I think in the books it will become much clearer much more apparent and much more fleshed out what I think it'll be very interesting to see what George R. R. Martin comes up with um, it's almost like we saw the skeleton without really seeing the flesh and blood you know so I felt like they rushed it I think they rushed the last two seasons I think they should have done 10 episodes in each of those last two seasons and they should have spent um, an obscene amount of money on finishing this, the show in a very uh, in, in a in a not a rushed way and I felt like it was rushed because I just think I know you don't have the material any longer you don't have the books, so it makes it much more difficult. As you feel, I think you could feel that the show in the last two seasons became much more spectacular. And I think it lost a little in its, um, its de de depiction of, uh, of the ruthlessness of power and what people go to to try and find that power and to hang on to it and also just feeling like characters were, were were always surprising you which is with the thing that we love so much about game of thrones is that we never got what we expected and it uh, happened like this also in the final um do you think maybe game of thrones somehow paved the road for future similar series um there's no doubt about it that people are much more interested in in fantasy in a way that they weren't before not not the the consumers not us who watch it and enjoy it but the studio creators i remember for before we made game of thrones whenever you used to talk to people who used to make tv shows uh they swore that it would be impossible to 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 make a, a successful fantasy show they would would uh, absolutely pass anything like that because they just thought, well, there's no, there's a niche market, but it would never really make enough to to because obviously these shows are expensive. You have to create a world from scratch, so you need armorers and costume designers and and you know the, the, every every element has to even the food has to be created. So it costs a lot of money and uh, no one was willing to risk it. However, nowadays, everyone's looking for the next Game of Thrones, which will be difficult because as we saw with, with how Game of Thrones turned out, the mind of George R. R. Martin is a very difficult thing to replicate. Do you think we will maybe soon see a similar show that will uh, catch our attention so, so strong? 
Well, HBO are really hoping that the prequel, the Targaryen prequel to Game of Thrones, will be that show. So we will see how that goes. I mean, there's some fantastic material. The world is so well depicted and created. If they get it right, it will be fantastic. I think it really will be because it will be a period of time which, which will feel very different to Game of Thrones because Game of Thrones began in a world where people had forgotten that magic existed and forgotten that dragons existed and had basically, these were myths, you know, from far, far away. And people, the idea of, of, of zombies coming to kill you from the north was something that people just laughed at and scoffed at and only superstitious people kind of believed in it. And in the end, as we saw, it was like a life and death situation between good and evil in, in a very basic way. So so um, uh, the, the prequels will be set in a world where those things haven't been forgotten yet. So, so there will be dragons. So that will be interesting. Do you think us humans need this kind of uh, movies, series, science fiction, especially to like kind of get away and also like remember that maybe magic exists? Does it exist? I don't <laughs> That's know. <the> <laughs> um, I think some things do. are magical, also. Yeah, of course, of course. Um, yes, yes, of course it is. I mean. From, from, from the beginning of anything, we've always told each other stories. And the stories that appeal to us the most are the ones that get inside our imagination and we can't stop thinking about. It. That's why uh, scary stories kind of stay with us for a long time. We, we, we share them. We, we tell each other the scariest stories. I mean, stories we pretend are true, but actually it's just an apocryphal story. So, so yeah, fantasy... Uh, there is, an, there is a, 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 something to be said about watching a gritty, realistic drama. But for a lot of people, they don't want to see kind of uh, a world they recognize. They want to see a world that they don't recognize, that they could lose themselves in and be surprised by because they, they are strangers in that world. And I think that is why we will always keep going back to science fiction and fantasy and and extraordinary stories about extraordinary people doing extraordinary things and and a lot of things that we will find reprehensible because you know it's cathartic that's true and also in the end i would like to ask you how would you convince a non science fiction fan to watch science fiction In the same way that you would persuade someone who doesn't, who thinks they don't like fantasy to watch Game of Thrones, because Game of Thrones was, as we always said at the beginning, was like uh, The Sopranos, but set in Middle Earth. That was one of the very first things they said. It's that, like, it's more political. It's more about the dynamics, about people who are ruthless and ambitious and will do whatever it takes to get power. That was what the story is about. And I think... Um, always, 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 and I think this is the reason why so many people were disappointed by this, the ending, was that Game of Thrones was a show that had dragons in it and the undead, but it was nothing to do with dragons and the undead. It was all about power. In the same way that Jaws, as, as a, a famous uh, film critic, and I don't think it's just him, Mark Commode, our British film critic, he, um, he always says, Jaws is a film that is not about a shark. <laughs> Because it's not. It's about the relationship between those three, three very disparate characters and uh, their odyssey to try and kill it. So yeah, Jaws is not about a shark and Game of Thrones is not about dragons and science fiction is not about space. It's about the stories and the characters and the, and the uh, situations that those people find themselves in. And if those stories are strong and convincing and connect because they are tr they feel true it doesn't matter whether it's set in a world that doesn't exist if those stories and those relationships feel true we will watch them and we will get a lot out of them so i would always say you know don't don't not watch something because it's science fiction don't not watch something because it's fantasy because you think it will be it won't be your thing 
because films uh, are very, uh, uh, very varied. And uh, I mean, we know, we know what uh, the normal run of the mill fantasy science fiction film is going to be like, but there is a big difference between Alien and Alien versus Predator. Those two films <laughs> are so different. They're both science fiction. Yeah. One I would recommend, the other one I won't. I'll let the audience figure out which one I would recommend. This was pretty convincing, I'm sure. Like, we all need a universe to get lost in. Uh, to get lost in, sorry. And um, I think this was it. Thank you for your presence today here and for the interview. Thank you for the very, very good questions. Very nice, uh, very, very interesting way of uh, thinking about uh, the, a film festival that we're about to do online tomorrow. So thank you very much. Thank you also. Uh, vă mulțumim că ați fost alături de noi. Rămâneți cu VTTV.